Not all chest exercises are created equal. You might think that you're developing that bigger, stronger chest, but you're just leaving gains on the table. I'm gonna show you some of the worst chest exercises that you're doing, and I'm gonna give you movements that are far superior, and we're gonna start, right? You may not think it's possible, but people can fuck up the bench press. The wide grip bench press is a horrible exercise, and there's one big reason here, okay? People will go super wide when they're pressing, and they think that that is going to target more of their pecs. The one big aspect here is they don't think about their humerus, okay, so their upper arm bone, in relation to their torso, and that really plays a massive role in how lengthened your pec is going to be. So if I have a wider grip, I will have less of an angle with my humerus in relation to my torso, and my pec actually will not get as lengthened. But what ends up happening is you shorten that range of motion so you can use a larger load in most cases, but that load won't be acting upon a lengthened pec. So the big question is gonna be, what exercise can we replace that wide grip bench press with? And that's where we've gotta think through what dumbbell movements can we use that will lead to a lengthened pec? And I'm gonna to talk to you about a movement that I absolutely love that can blow up your triceps and your pecs, okay? And this is gonna be a dumbbell bench with a neutral grip. And we can do this for, let's say, like five sets of four. Build up as heavy as possible. And then do two drop sets of 17, and you will feel that in your freaking pec. What we can do here is get nice and deep, and you can almost go a little bit wider here and come up, okay? And so we will get a huge pec stretch here because of that humerus relationship to our torso, okay? So we're gonna get nice and deep, nice and deep, nice and deep, and come up. And you can even use like a semi-neutral grip. If you notice right here, this would be a traditional neutral grip. If I can just go a little bit semi-neutral right here, that's gonna lead that pec to get super lengthened and then drive back up. Ooh, give me one more. Oh, so this is one of the absolute best movements that you can use to build your chest. Now, we're gonna look at a couple other garbage exercises, but in all reality, why should we even care about garbage movements? So we should care about garbage exercises and garbage movements because if we change little details or little aspects, we can lead to greater athletic development and greater muscular development. So I'm gonna use an example with grip change. Let's take a movement that we all love. And yes, so I'm actually gonna put this exercise inside of a bench video. So if we use the snatch, okay, let's take the snatch for an example here with a wide grip. Oh, oh, ooh. Now notice, one, my technique's terrible. Two, if we have a wider grip, we don't have to pull as high. So in turn, we can, in theory, use a little bit more load, but our mobility might not be as good, and maybe we don't have as much peak velocity, or we don't have as much high of a rate of force development because that range of motion is a little bit decreased. So if we wanna improve that range of motion, all we have to do is change the grip. Now, has anyone ever heard of a clean grip snatch or a close grip snatch? And I'm gonna demonstrate this without warming up. Did I mention that I ran a 10K this morning? <laughs> if we're doing a movement like a close grip snatch, how that grip change can actually affect how you're moving. And don't worry, we will get back to those chest exercises. So if I get into this position, okay, I have a round where I would be with my clean grip. Oh, one more. I can actually feel my shoulder blade spasming a little bit, but what ends up happening is now I have to pull longer, I have to drop and stay tighter in that upper back, and in turn, lead to greater shoulder strength. This is the difference in that grip change. You can elicit a higher rate of force development potentially, but you also can improve your mobility long term. But when we want to be the strongest, buffest, most athletic individual out there, is this necessarily what we want? Of course not. So where can we see what makes an exercise trash or what makes an exercise gold? We can see just a slight tweak that can drastically improve those movements. So let's take the traditional chest fly for an example. Okay, so if we get here, 
we go down and we're going to see a nice stretch of the pec. It should be decent, right? But there's one issue here. One, it is a little bit risky. It can put you in a little bit weird position. And a lot of people who do that traditional chest fly will indeed have some type of shoulder issues after a long period of time. One thing that I will say is you can change the angle slightly to make it a bit better movement. But the big issue is that you can't really get a ton of lengthening without putting that shoulder in a bad position. So one movement that we can do is take the exercises that tend to be a little wonky and improve them with a couple different patterns. And that's gonna look something like this. Okay, so we can go and do a chest fly on the eccentric, and instead of coming back up on the concentric like this, where we would hug a big oak tree or a big, large individual, we will come down slow eccentric, slow eccentric, come in and press. Okay, so we get this slow eccentric, in and press. Slow eccentric, in and press. Do that again. So you take a little bit of the stress off of the shoulder while you end up doing this. And you can do this for like five sets of seven with that press. And that's going to lead to those massive pecs. Table flies. Garbage. Now, I will say, I don't absolutely hate the cable fly, but I do think there are superior movements that we can use. And later, we're gonna show you one that you can use for sweep pre-fatigue. Okay, so one thing that we can do to replace that cable fly is to use our power elastics. I wanna actually go from a couple different angles. And the reason why I like going from above me is this is gonna blow up my pec minor, which is really, really hard to do with a cable fly. So if I'm here, I wanna squeeze when I'm down at the bottom, right here. It's almost gonna be like a pec minor dip. Now, the unique aspect too, is that because it's banded, it's a little bit harder when you're down at the bottom and you've really gotta control that and have some type of trunk control. I also like to use this on a cable and I'll actually lower this right around here. There we go. And I will use this for pre-fatigue. So I can go here. Oh, boo. Oh, I got a huge pump in my pecs. And then I use it as pre-fatigue and I go over and I do some type of dumbbell neutral grip press. And that's going to absolutely light up your pecs. But what else is gonna make an exercise trash? So one way to make sure that your chest exercises are absolute trash is to set up your incline bench just a little bit too steep. So if we look at this, okay, this is where we're gonna get closer to that 90 degrees, okay? That's gonna be about 75 to 80 degrees. This is where we're gonna be around 60 degrees. And so if I'm set up at a 60 degree incline, for chest movement, it's not the best. If we look at this, this is gonna be way more triceps and shoulders here. Oh, let me get a couple reps in. Now, if I change this, Okay, if I can lower this. And recent research has shown us that if we're around 15 to 30 degrees, that is gonna be the optimal area or angle that we wanna be in if we want to light up those pecs on an incline bench. So that can take us down to around this area or even, and a lot of people are gonna lose their minds, even down around this angle. Okay, so if we can get into this specific angle, which is just around 15 degrees, get set. We're gonna see that if we bang out, let's say 12 to 15 reps, get that huge pump with that semi-neutral grip, that's gonna be the best angle and the best location to light up those pecs. So if you're using a traditional fly, one thing that you can do is just change the concentric aspect of that fly. If you change the concentric action, you can lead to greater pec recruitment, especially if you're squeezing with that pinch grip. If you're using something like that incline bench and it's too steep, just change the angle of attack. If we change that angle of attack, now all of a sudden that angle of attack leads to greater recruitment in the actual pecs, which is what we're looking for specifically. And then finally, if we're changing something like our grip, 
that's going to lead to a greater stretch shortening cycle potentially and greater lengthening of the pec, which in turn can lead to greater recruitment, greater growth, greater athletic muscle. There's a ton of alternatives out there because choosing exercises that keep your chest small aren't your friend. And that's why you've got to make sure that you focus on movements that are going to lead to greater recruitment. And we've got over 700 different movements inside of our strength training app, Peak Strength. Head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store. You can download Peak Strength today. You'll get five free workouts. And our accessory movements are freaking phenomenal to lead to that crazy pec development. Because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.